I have a guest that I've been waiting for. I uh, have done a couple shows with May Bogenhagen, and uh, she is the founder of Two Asian Matchmakers. She is, is such an interesting guest because you don't know how how much it takes to, to do what she does. She has a database of, you know, you don't just throw anybody in there. She takes only people that, you know, are going to fit the criteria of her clients. So, guys, with no further ado, it's my honor to bring back to the program the owner and founder of Two Asian Matchmakers, it's Miss May Bugenhagen. May, how are you today? I'm good, and you are absolutely correct that we don't take men who are a mess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, if you're if you're on your your mother's couch, uh, that that's probably not gonna uh, that's not gonna jive. Correct. Correct. We like men who maybe are homeowners, maybe excel in what they do. They are a prominent doctor. They are a researcher, a professor, a banker, someone who just values their time more than money and can be able to, you know, send this piece of their work to me and have me work on it Mm -hmm. so they don't have to deal with it and just delegate it. I mean, they have the means to. Why not just delegate someone as a recruiter to find you the one? I mean... Dating should be easy and fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what we were talking about last time, I thought I was thinking about that. It's 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 so amazing what you do because, you know, after you go on a, a date, you don't know how the other person feels. You don't know if you should call. You don't know if they want to see you again. Uh, hey, May, uh, did did I uh, was it wrong that I ran out of gas on the way home and I had to call my grandmother to send me? You, you know what I mean? It's it's uh, a. <laughs> I'm just making a joke. I, I, uh, I, you wouldn't take somebody that, like that. You, that's that's why you don't. Just your re- reputation is on the line here. Right. Well, I mean, if that's, he's somebody who's watching his parents and trying to, you know, take care of them, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But what are other things we need to focus on on the date? Like, don't highlight that part of your life. Like, highlight your interests, your goals. Where do you see yourself in five or ten years? Focus on the positives. I think... A lot of people go on dates and they're like complaining about their exes or their jobs. That's a, that's a no no. I was going to ask you the do's and don'ts. That's yeah. that's probably number one, right? Don't talk about exes. Don't talk about exes. It's not the time for it. Maybe <laughs> on your third, maybe the third or fourth date, because once you get that third date, it means she or he is interested in you. I mean, mm-hmm. isn't that the thing? Like normally you kiss on the third date. So yeah, I said some people means- do other stuff. Yeah, I guess. Right. That means, like, on the third date, you can reveal a little bit more about yourself, but in layers, you know, don't just vomit all the information on <laughs> don't, somebody. Don't overshare. Right. <laughs> Oversharing is not, is not good. It's yeah. Not good. And, and, like, you know, will you work with your clients uh, about saying stuff just like that? Say, um, you know, if, if the person is, uh, your client is nervous or whatever, will you kind of talk them off the ledge and, and just uh, do you talk to them before the date? Or how does it work? Well, there are some clients that come to me that are, uh, they say they're shy, mm-hmm. they're introverts, they're new to dating, they're a little bit unsure. But the great news is we can have a little pep talk with them right before the date nice. and right, uh, get feedback from them after the date. So, it's just a way for them to talk to a third person without being judged. You mm-hmm. know, it's just a great way to talk about your feelings, talk about your insecurities, and we'll walk you through it. And some clients need a little bit of hand-holding, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, the company, we pride ourselves in hand-holding the clients who need it and setting up quality, not quantity dates, and just always being ethical in this part of the business. So it's just the way to be if you want to be successful and if I want to be here another 10 years yeah. I need to do the right thing by the clients right totally. not do anything shady or anything like that mm-hmm. hey May can you tell me the difference between you know for someone who's like listening to their car and they, they don't uh, they haven't heard the other shows what's the difference b- between online dating and matchmaking uh, and I'll get to that caller in a minute well matchmaking if you hire a matchmaker like myself I pretty much guarantee you dates mm-hmm Shame on me if I take you on and I don't think women want to meet you. That's my fault. I see. That's when I made the mistake of taking a man on and I can't find him dates. So online dating is all about emailing, texting, and people that are just passively dating or not serious. and Or cheating. Or cheating. So 
with matchmaking is I get to know the client. I get to know the women. I ask them a bunch of questions. They don't lie to me. I mean, I could tell if a woman's a gold digger. I can tell <laughs> if she's lazy. I can tell if she's a go-getter, if she's too ambitious for this guy. So just people's tones and the way they talk about themselves really give a lot of it away. So my job is to interview both parties and see if their goals and their key life values align and then I take it from there. And the chemistry part, that's up to them. Yeah. <laughs> they need to figure that out on the date. Mm-hmm. So. I, I, what, a, what a great uh, service that you provide because it, it's, it's almost like you got the, the filter and all the, all the, the you-know-what uh, out of the picture. And uh, you have a chance with, with every, every date because sometimes it's just a waste of time. Yeah, I get to ask the men and the women questions that you normally wouldn't ask a regular online dater person yeah. you know i would ask them okay are you healthy do you have any stds <laughs> sure you know oh what my i mean God. Like, yeah that's great so many things i'm just the middleman i can ask all the nitty-gritty questions that you don't feel comfortable asking like what kind of car does he drive how much money does he make what's his salary <laughs> what's his income like it's stuff that you that, that you would like to know right but i can find out i can tell you you know you know, nice way. I'm not going to reveal everything about him if he doesn't want me to reveal some things about him. But I can certainly say, look, he hired a matchmaker. He obviously can afford to hire one and has disposable income. Look Mm -hmm. at all the places he's traveled. You can tell he likes traveling and has the means to travel and the resources to travel. So you can figure out someone's lifestyle based on the answers they give you. So you just have to know what questions to ask them to get those answers. And you've, you've been doing this uh, and been so successful at it for the longest time where you probably, uh, after one conversation, you probably know if this is somebody uh, that qualifies uh, to, to be uh, in your, your database or you'll take on uh, as, a, as a client, right? Right, right. I mean, I've been doing this since 2009 full time. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I just love, love people. But more than that, I genuinely care about them and really want them to find somebody. I mean, this job would not be fun if you didn't care about the people and if you don't, you know, have the ability to read them and find out what they're looking for and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And you were telling me, like, you were telling me that, 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 uh, you can't even explain the, the feeling you get when you are responsible for putting two people together and it works out. Um, that must feel pretty amazing. Yes, especially if I get, like, a Christmas card from them and I have, like, <laughs> little kids, you know. I mean, wow. it's, so, it's so rewarding. Like, what a rewarding job to have, and I get paid for it. Yes, sometimes it's stressful, mm-hmm. but for most part, it's just fun, you know. It sounds like a sexy job, but there's really a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes as well. <laughs> well, I, I was saying before uh, that um, – I don't know how you do it. I mean, how much how much work goes into this? Uh, you, you, because like I said, and we're talking about you, there is a certain criteria that you you have to fit. And once you got that, now you have to decide if the person is a nice person or if they are someone that uh, you want to be working with. Because I, I I assume that you can't take on as many people as as you want. I mean, how many do you take on at a time? I take on 10 to 12 men at a time so I can give them the personalized attention and service. And obviously they pay me for it. So I want to be able to deliver, quote unquote, the goods. You know, <laughs> I don't want to just take someone's money and then not help them and not have any matches for them to meet. I mean, otherwise they're just doing online dating and just wasting time. So uh, I have a vast robust database of 7,200 women, which is a lot of women that I've personally pre-screened and feel like, okay, they meet my criteria, you know? So yeah, I don't take a whole lot of men because I'm not one of those big companies that, you know, burn and turn matches. Like that's right. not, that's not what I'm doing. You got, you got, you got the, the personal touch and there and, and, you know, being one of the most successful people in this field, you would uh, you would think that um, you know you're the person to go to if you guys want to go to two Asian matchmaker, uh, two Asian matchmakers dot com. And let me I, I'm so sorry I forgot about the person on the phone. Uh, hey uh, caller, I'm sorry to forget about you. Uh, that was rude. Uh, caller, you're on the air with uh, with with May uh, Bugenhagen. What's your name? 
This is how dedicated I am. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tony Ann. How are you? Tony Ann, you got May. Hi, May. Listen, Hi. Uh, I wanted to know, do you offer same-sex match? I do not do that because it is not my specialty. However, because we have colleagues that I work with, I could recommend one or two same-sex uh, matchmaker for you if you want to email me. Um, there's one or two that I really trust. So, yes, you could email me, and I'd be happy to uh, steer you in the right direction. Hey, okay, uh, great, and, great question. And, oh, sorry, you got another one. Okay, go ahead. What's, what's the email? You can email me at may at... Two Asian Matchmakers with an S. dot com. All right, great. Awesome. Hey, hey, thank, thanks for your great question, uh, and uh, th that's that's a great point. Yeah, May, I, I don't know because that would be a whole uh, different, uh, you know. The, I assume that would whole different business. A whole another yeah. database, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not Jeez. my specialty, and I don't claim to be, and I don't want to take someone's money if I can't deliver the goods. I got uh, Laura from El Paso. My daughter has always been beautiful, but has horrible taste in men. <laughs> Can the services you offer connect her to successful men? I'm tired of her dating losers. <laughs> that's great. Uh, El Paso, that's where I was born. Get out of here. Okay. okay. Um, so, yes, I would love to have her be part of my database. And if there's a great guy for her to meet, I would love to email her and interview her and ask her if she's open to meeting him. This will only work if she is open to dating men all across the U.S. because I don't have a huge list of clients in El Paso mm. to date because okay. I'm based out of L.A. and Colorado Springs. So, But if she fills out a profile and submits some recent photos, a headshot, a body shot, I'd be happy to uh, include her in my database. And you never know because I also work with tons of matchmakers across the U.S. who are looking for a match for their male clients. And if she is a good match for one of them, I would certainly um, contact the other matchmaker and her and see if we can make a match. You just never know. I would just love to be another resource for her. Um, to be enlisted in my database, that'll be great. It's it's it's, it's your it's your networking uh, that um, yeah. I guess makes you so successful. Because if you can't do it, I know you got somebody who you know might be able to uh, to because you've been doing this and you guys kind of help each other out, don't you? Like uh, yes, we collaborate and it's a very friendly industry. Surprisingly, it's not competitive. It's like we all want what's best for our clients and people who take the time to put their information in my database and they meet my criteria, of course I'm going to watch out for them and keep an eye out for them. So all that stuff matters. Gotcha. Uh, so just to, to, to make it, uh, to clear it up for, for people who may not know, so your clients are going to be male, but um, the women who might be looking to, they will go through the, the, the same process, but they'll get in the, in the, the database, uh, right? I mean, you don't take women on because most of the 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 uh, clients you have are going to be male, and most of them are going to be looking for Asian Asian women, right? Yes. I have the traditional business model in this industry where the men are the paying clients and the women join the database for free, get set up for free, have a consultation for free. So because I think men should pay. I mean, yeah, men should yeah. be the ones that are leading the charge in this. Of course. And the women... Still, I still put them through the ringer and ask them a bunch of questions and find out information about them. Yeah, so the yeah. thing is, I work for the men. So if a man declines a woman, I just move on. Then gotcha. I say, okay, let me keep searching for you. Okay. And how do, how do women uh, kind of, I would say, audition to get in the database? Uh, they, they go they, out to, to where? They go to my website, to AsianMatchmakers.com, and where it says women sign up here, they just click on there, fill out the profile, send me some recent photos of them, and right away I look at their information. It comes to my emails right away, and I see, okay, let me see if there's a guy for her to meet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I contact her, and if I don't have a guy, I say, sorry, I don't have anyone right now, but is it okay that I keep your information? And usually they say yes. Gotcha. And what happens if, in the in the meantime, when uh, you know time goes by, say they get married or they're in a, a relationship, what do they, what do they do? They they call you or do you check in with them or the? Uh... Oh, I check in with them uh, probably every three months. Okay. 
if they're uh, in my database, if they're inactive, I say, hey, are you active again? Are you dating again or not? Um, if they're active in my database, I just email them or call them or text them when I have someone for them to meet. I gotcha. actually bombard them. I text <laughs> them, call them, and email them because I'm like, oh, I have someone great for you, and I get all excited. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, I, pretty I much got it. Them. Yeah. That's, 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 again, how much work you do is just incredible. And what a great service. I mean, because, you know, you're. Uh, you're keeping up with these people. So, uh, look, so much work is being done. If you're a guy out there, you're a successful guy, you're looking for somebody, why would you not do this? Uh, uh, why would you not go with May, someone who's been doing this and who's uh, at the top of uh, her game and the top in the field? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, everything is uh, the whole um, uh, filtering process is already done for you. Uh, so so uh, I, I think your clients must love you, May. They do, actually. I still keep in touch with them, even after they get in a relationship. So I just care about people, and I encourage them to Facebook friend me and keep in touch. And, you know, I just want to know what's going on with them and learn from them. Obviously, I'm learning all the time from them as well. They're not just learning from me. Wow. Awesome. Uh, May, that's why uh, you're successful, I guess. Hey, May, uh, let me hand uh, the – we're out of time here, so let me hand – uh, the mic over to you, uh, and uh, anything you want the, the listeners to remember or anything you want to leave them with. Uh, May Bugenhagen, guys, she is uh, the founder of Two Asian Matchmakers. Go to twoasianmatchmakers.com. Great guest, one of my favorites. Go ahead, May. You got, you got the last word. Okay. Well, Two Asian Matchmakers, we've enjoyed a lot of success with matching men of all ethnicities to Asian women. And if you're not an Asian woman, I still encourage you to be part of my database with over – 4,200 first dates under my belt and countless marriages. I'm kind of a matchmaking guru that you want to get to know. So I would love to meet you. Contact me. Call me. Text me. 310-867-0851 or find me at 2AsianMatchmakers.com. Awesome. Looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so much, Casey. I appreciate this. It's hey, a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it is fun talking to you and, and asking you questions. Guys, we'll be right back. Stay right there. Maybe you can take it, everybody. Thank you.